Welcome primary four, Ms. Heba Ahmad is with you. Today we will complete concept three in unit three, but we will take today lesson two. And as I said before, this lesson is, or this concept is talking about the renewable resources of energy. And now we will talk about the sun. The sun provides us with light and heat. Plants need the sunlight to grow. And without the sun, we will die. Why? Because without the sun, the plants cannot grow, so the animals will not find anything to eat. So, the humans will not find any plants and animals to eat, so all the living organisms on the earth will die. So, without the sun, there is no life on the earth. The sun provides us with light and heat, and plants need the sunlight to grow. That's the shape of the plant in the presence of the sunlight. It's healthy and it can grow. But in the absence in the sunlight, the plant will die. Without the sun, plants will die and animals that eat them will die. So the life will, of the earth on the earth will disappear. The sun. The sun is a star. And it's a giant pool of gases. Most of these gases are hydrogen and helium. So the sun is consists of a group of gases. Most of these gases are hydrogen and helium. The surface of the sun is not solid, like the surface of the earth. No, this surface is consists of gases and the surface of the sun, this layer that you can see by your eyes, we call it photosphere. Photosphere. So, this layer of the sun that we can see is called photosphere. The photosphere is a gas layer on the surface of the sun, where the light we see is emitted. So the photosphere is the layer that emits the sunlight. This that's the structure of the sun. Okay, where the sun is consists of different layers. The upper layer or the layers that we see by our eyes is called photosphere, and the photosphere layer. It emits the light that we can see. How does the sun produce light and heat? The energy of the sun comes due to the chemical reaction between hydrogen and helium gases in a very high temperature. So, in photosphere, there is helium and hydrogen gases that react together at a very high temperature and that produce the light and heat. Light and heat travel through the space in a form of waves until they reach to the Earth. As you can see, light and heat that produced from the photosphere by the reaction between the helium and the hydrogen, they travel to the space through the space in a form of waves until they reach the Earth. So, don't look directly to the sun as its rays are too strong and it will harm your eyes. And you can wear glasses to lock to the sun. How we can feel warm at night when the sun is absent? Okay, because the land and the water on the earth absorb the energy from the sun. So, if they are not doing this, if the land and water on the earth were not absorbing the heat, we will get freeze in the night. But land and water on the earth absorb energy from the sun. So we keep feel warming on the earth during the night. The solar energy. The solar energy, it's the light and heat energy that coming from the sun. And we can call it radiation energy. So the solar energy has another name, which is radiation energy. So the solar energy, it's the light energy and heat energy that coming from the sun due to the reaction between helium and hydrogen in the photosphere layer at a very high temperature. The solar energy has another name, which is radiation energy. The solar energy produces a type of energy called radiation energy that found in the sun rays. Uses of the solar energy. Number one, direct source of thermal energy. As you can see in this picture, you can take the thermal energy to keep your body warm by the by taking it from the solar energy from the sun in warming houses if you open your wind your windows 
in the morning, the sun will enter your house and keep your house warm. In greenhouses, the greenhouses, the humans make the greenhouses to allow the plants that grow in warm climate to grow in winter. So we use the greenhouses to grow the plants that warm in that grow in warm climate climate during the winter. We know that there is plants grow in winter and there is other plants grow in summer. But now by using the greenhouses we can planting the plants that grow in summer in the winter season by using the greenhouses. So what happened? Do you remember the global warming in the last concept that the carbon dioxide trap the heat? This is the same idea. The solar, the greenhouses allow the uh, solar energy or radiation energy to pass through it and the greenhouses trap the heat of the solar energy so it increases the temperature inside the greenhouses so it makes the atmosphere or make the weather warm inside it to allow the plants that grow in warm climates, climates to grow inside it. So the greenhouses change the radiation energy or the solar energy into thermal energy because it traps the heat inside it. So the thermal energy helps the farmers to plant the crops that only grow in warm climates. In cooking food by using curved mirrors. As you can see, that's the curved mirror. This curved mirror collects the sunlight in one point and reflects it into the cooking pot, this and this. One more time, this curved mirror collects the sunlight like this. The sunlight fall on the curved mirror, but it collected in one point like this. Then it reflected to the cooking pot, so it can allow the cooking pot to heat, or we can use it to heat cooking pots or making cooking to the food. So the curved mirrors collect and focus the sun rays, and we use it in cooking food. One more time. The curved mirrors collect and focus the sunlight and we use it in cooking the food. In heating water, all of us have water heater inside our bathroom in our houses, right? And this water heater works by the electricity. Okay, that's a water heater like we have in our houses but in different shape. But this water heater it doesn't use the electric energy to uh, heat the water, but it uses the solar energy. This is the solar panels. And this type of solar panels, it changes solar energy into thermal energy, not electrical energy. That's the tank that we store the water that we want to heat inside it. Behind these solar panels, there is a small tubes. The water moves from the tank inside the tube that behind the solar panels. The solar panel panels take the solar energy and change it into thermal energy. This thermal energy makes the pipes under it very hot, and these pipes make the, make the water inside it very hot, so the water is heated by, by using the solar energy. Let's talk, talk about the solar panels. The solar panels may be very small and it will produce a small amount of electricity that we use in lightning lanes. Or solar panels may be very large that produce a large amount of electricity that used to supply the building or cities with energy. How does the solar panels work? The solar, solar panel is consists of many small solar cells. Can you see these small squares? Yes, it's called solar cells. So the solar panels are consists of many small solar cells. These solar cells it change the solar energy or radiation energy into electric energy or thermal energy. You remember 
the using the solar energy in heating water in this one in this example yes this solar panel it changes solar energy into thermal energy to heat the water right and also the solar panels we use it to generate electricity so the solar panel may change the solar energy into electric energy or may change the solar energy into thermal energy but most of solar panels are used to generate electricity or change the solar energy into electrical energy as you can see that this is the solar panel that takes solar energy from the sun and change it into electric energy as you can see that go, go inside the wires to the house that's the solar panels that produce the electric energy so the solar panels may change the solar energy or radiation energy into electric energy or may change the solar energy into thermal energy uses of the electricity that generated from the solar panels as we said before most of the solar panels are used to generate electricity or change the solar energy into electric energy what is the uses of this electric energy produced from solar panels we use it in light the streets or recharging the batteries of the calculators like this that's the calculator and that's solar panels these solar panels take the solar energy and they change it into electric energy this electric energy stored inside the battery of the calculator and make the calculator operate number three to operate the electric devices in the houses okay like this example here okay and also we use it to to operate irrigation equipment in small villages okay that's irrigation equipment or water pump that the farmers use to uh, make the water uh, make the water go to the plains this water pump or this irrigation equipment need to uh, rise the water from under the ground to up like this so it needs force this force it get it from the solar panels it works by the electricity this electricity it get it from the solar panels so the electricity that produced from solar panels we use it in light streets recharging the batteries of the calculator to operate electric devices in the house and to operate the irrigation equipment or water pumps thank you for listening miss Hiba ahmed was with you